Good afternoon. This afternoon we celebrate the third Sunday of Lent and also it's the first weekend of the month so we are taking up a our uh, food pantry collection is this weekend and the baskets to receive that offering are the ones that are furthest back on the altar platform. Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace, blessings, and mercy from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And with your spirit. As we remember to keep holy the Sabbath day by coming together on this third Sunday of Lent and hearing the Ten Commandments and their call to make God the center of our lives as well as to show love for one's neighbor, Jesus challenges us as he did those in the temple to purify our hearts. Sisters and brothers, we prepare ourselves for this time of worship in God's temple by examining ourselves on how we have kept God's commandments, knowing the Lord understands human nature. Have mercy on us, O Lord. For we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. And grant us your salvation. May Almighty God, whose mercy is greater than our sins, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. God of goodness, through Moses you entrusted to Israel the commandments as signs of your love for your covenanted people. And in Christ, your power and your wisdom, you reveal the full meaning of your love and mercy by overcoming human weakness and sin and speaking words of everlasting life. Forgive our failings, for we are members of his body and the purified temple of the new covenant. Lift us from death and give us new life through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, 
God delivered all these commandments. I, the Lord, am your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, the place of slavery. You shall not have other gods besides me. You shall not carve idols for yourselves in the shape of anything in the sky above or on the earth below or in the waters beneath the earth. You shall not bow down before them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, inflicting punishment for their father's wickedness on the children of those who hate me, down to the third and fourth generation, but bestowing mercy down to the thousandth generation on the children of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not leave unpunished the one who takes his name in vain. Remember to keep holy the Sabbath day. Six days you may labor and do all your work. No work may be done by either of you, or your son, or your daughter, or your male or female slave, or your beast, or by the alien who lives with you. In six days the Lord made heavens and earth, and sea, and all that is in them. But on the seventh day he rested. That is why the Lord has blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother, that you may have a long life in the land in which the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear forth false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male or female slave, nor his ox or ass, or anything else that belongs to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea, and all of them were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. All ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from a spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was the Christ. Yet God was not pleased with most of them, for they were struck down in the desert. These things happened as examples for us, so that we might not desire evil things as they did. Do not grumble as some of them did and suffered death by the destroyer. These things happened to them as an example, and they have been written down as a warning to us, upon whom the end of the ages has come. Therefore, whoever thinks he is standing secure should take care not to fall. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. peace be with you. A reading from the good news, the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Since the Passover of the Jews was near, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. He found in the temple area those who sold oxen, sheep, and doves, as well as the money changers seated there. He made a whip out of cords and drove them all out of the temple area with the sheep and oxen and spilled the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And to those who sold doves, he said, take these out of here and stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples recalled the words of scripture, zeal for your house will consume me. At this, the Jews answered and said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? And Jesus answered and said to them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and you will raise it up in three days. But he was speaking about the temple of his body. Therefore, when he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they came to believe the scripture and the word Jesus had spoken. While he was in Jerusalem for the Feast of Passover, Many began to believe in his name when they saw the signs he was doing. But Jesus would not trust himself to them because he knew them all and did not need anyone to testify about human nature. He himself understood it well. The Gospel of the Lord. Why don't we ever hear anything from the pulpit on the Ten Commandments anymore? Are they out of date, irrelevant, no longer to be observed? The contrast with the past is especially vivid since there was such a heavy emphasis on the commandments in church preaching, teaching, and in confession. Indeed, Christian morality seemed to be equated with adherence to the Ten Commandments. 
For the Christian, however, morality is the New Testament teachings of Christ. For example, in the Sermon on the Mount, summarized in the Eight Beatitudes in Matthew chapter 5. A new commandment I give you, Jesus told his disciples at the Last Supper, love one another as I have loved you. The law of love is the New Testament Christian morality. But the contemporary church's emphasis on love does not mean that the moral teachings of the Old Testament are out. The Old Testament law is summarized in the Ten Commandments, and obedience to them is a presumed minimum for the Christian. They are the moral foundation on which the New Testament law of love is lived. If we only keep the Ten Commandments, we are good and pious Jews, but we are not Christians. However, if we do not keep the commandments, we're not even good Jews, spiritually speaking. So this evening time seems like a good time, midway through Lent, to briefly review the Decalogue. Ten, by the way, because we have ten fingers, and it made it easier for illiterate people to memorize them. In the Old Testament, the Hebrew Scriptures, we have two lists of the Ten Commandments. One in Exodus, that we heard this evening, and one in Deuteronomy. Most Protestants and Jews use the Exodus text. Catholics, Lutherans, and Orthodox use the Deuteronomy list. The only significant difference is being that in the Exodus version, the first two commandments are divided into two, and the ninth and tenth are combined into one. It doesn't particularly matter until you're having a conversation where you're talking about the seventh commandment, and we're talking about stealing, and the Protestants are talking about adultery. In any case, the Exodus list, the first two commandments deal with false gods. You shall not have other or strange gods besides me. You shall not carve idols for yourselves. What is condemned is worshiping anyone or anything besides the one Lord and God. Besides idols of stone and wood, we can make money, sex, alcohol and other drugs, possessions, power, or social prestige into idols more important in our lives than God. What is also condemned is any attempt to control or manipulate God or make God into an it. God is a free spirit and demands loyalty, which is what the Jealousy of God commentary is all about. And notice that punishment is for three to four generations, but mercy to the thousands generation. The second commandment, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not leave unpunished the one who takes his name in vain. It condemns any off-handed use of the name of the Lord. God's name is holy and must not be used lightly or misused, for example, in swearing to a falsehood or in doing evil. Remember to keep holy the Sabbath day. The Sabbath rule, changed from Saturday to Sunday by the early Christians in honor of Christ's resurrection on Easter Sunday, was a practical way to allow for rest and for giving a period of time each week to God for worship and instruction. Human work is sanctified by being put into the context of God's work of creation. So too is human rest sanctified. Our work-oriented society needs to reflect more on this commandment of Sabbath rest. The first three commandments dealt with our relationship with God. The next deal with our relationship with our neighbor. And the first and basic relationship is the family. Honor your father and mother that you may have a long life in the land which the Lord your God has given you. The fourth commandment is the only one of the ten 
with a blessing attached to it. And this honor was not just meant for young children. Adults were to reverence and respect their parents for as long as they lived. You shall not kill. The fifth commandment upholds the right to life by condemning murder. We must not act like God in God's lordship over life. You shall not commit adultery. The right to a home is affirmed. Monogamy is the ideal, one man, one woman. By this commandment, married women were forbidden to have extramarital affairs. Jesus did away with the double standard. The seventh commandment, you shall not steal, affirms the right to property. Taking what belongs to another is condemned, as is the taking of a fellow Israelite into slavery. And it would take a mere nine centuries for the church to condemn all slavery. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. The Eighth Commandment upholds the right to one's reputation. The integrity of one's word is necessary. Lying, especially perjury at a trial, is condemned. In the Exodus list of the commandments, the Ninth and Tenth are combined into one. You shall not cover your neighbor's wife. You shall not cover your neighbor's goods, anything that belongs to him or her. This is the principle of the inner attitude. You shall not have envy in your heart about your neighbor's spouse or property. It is no virtue, for example, to avoid misbehaving with the next door neighbor's wife or making off with his power mower simply because he's sitting in the window with a shotgun or a police officer is in sight. Setting about, even in one's heart, to get what belongs to another is condemned. God delivered all these commandments. In the words of the 19th Psalm that was our response today, God's clear commands are right, gladdening the heart. The command of the Lord is clear, sharpening the vision. In solidarity with the catechumens who will receive the creed this week throughout the Catholic world, we profess our faith using the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in the Lord, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, the Lord, who was conceived in the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. Amen. And there he will come to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Christ Jesus is near his Father and intercedes unceasingly in our favor. With confidence, let us then present our prayers for the salvation of our sisters and brothers. Let us pray for the church. May Pope Francis and our bishops lead us in God's ways with wisdom and with courage, we pray. Let us pray for elected officials and all of those in public service. May they use their positions to promote the common good, especially by improving the lives of our disadvantaged brothers and sisters, we pray. Let us pray for those who are seeking employment. May they find meaningful work that allows their families to live 
and dignity. We pray. Lord, in your mercy, Lord, in your mercy, be our prayer. Let us pray for an end to racism. May our laws and policies reflect our belief that God created us all equal. We pray. Lord, in your mercy, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for Catherine and Stephen. May they continue their journey towards the completion of the sacraments of initiation, guided by holy wisdom, a deeper friendship with Jesus, and a clear appreciation of God's creative activity in and through them, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all those who have answered God's call to vow religious life. May they know the gratitude of the church for their centuries of service and fulfillment of Christ's mission, we pray. Let us pray for all who are sick, for those who are vulnerable to COVID-19, and for those whose relationships need healing. We pray. Lord, in your mercy, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for Thomas B. Hepp and all deceased members of our families in St. Vincent's Parish. May they know eternal joy and fulfillment in God, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all the concerns in our book of intentions and those we hold in our hearts. We pray. Lord, in your mercy, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our Father, of old your Son drove the sellers from the temple. Today, drive away from our hearts, which are the temples of the Holy Spirit, everything that offends your presence and fill them with your perfect love through Christ our Lord. Amen.
sisters and brothers, that these gifts, symbols of our desire for renewal this Lent, may be acceptable to the all-merciful one, God the Almighty Father. Lord, by the grace of this sacrament, may we who ask forgiveness be ready to forgive one another. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Consumed with zeal, we come from the Feast of the Word to the Feast of the Table. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Right it is to bless your name, Holy Father, rich in mercy, on our journey toward the Paschal Light in the footsteps of Christ, Master and Model of Humanity, reconciled in love. Again, you set your church upon the road of the Exodus to journey through the Lenten desert, that as we walk toward your holy mountain with a heart contrite and humbled, we may become conscious of our vocation to be a temple of the covenant called together for your praise, to listen to your word and to experience with joy the great and wondrous sign of your love. For this wondrous plan of salvation, we praise you, joining with the angels, the ministers of your glory, as together we acclaim in song. We give you praise, Father Most Holy, for you are great, and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You formed the human race in your own image and entrusted the whole world to our care, so that in serving you alone, the Creator, we might have dominion over all creatures. And when, through disobedience, we had lost your friendship, you did not abandon us to the domain of death, for you came in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who seek might find you. Time and again you offered us covenants, and through the prophets like Moses taught us to look forward to salvation. And you so love the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior. Made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, he shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor, Christ proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners' freedom and to the sorrowful of heart joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for our sake, Christ sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits for those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, Lord, we pray, may this same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, for the celebration of this great mystery that you himself left us, 
as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come, for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, as he loved his own over in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, Jesus took bread, blessed, broke it them, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice of blessing, filled with the fruit of the vine, Jesus gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for the many for the forgiveness of sins. Then he said to them, do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us. Therefore, Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you that brings salvation to the whole world. But O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church and grant in your loving kindness, we all will partake of this one bread in one chalice, but gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant Francis, our Pope, Edward, our Bishop, Howard, our Bishop Emeritus, and the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, the religious, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ, especially as you remembered in the prayer of the faithful and all the dead, whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant our merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and Sir Joseph, her spouse, with your apostles, St. Vincent, and all saints in your kingdom, there with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death, and we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever and ever. to loyalty by living God's commandments and Jesus' law of love. Let us pray to the one Lord our God in the words of the beloved Son. Deliver us, O Lord, from every evil, especially not following your commandments. In your mercy, free us from every sin, protect us from all distress and fear, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to the apostles, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Look down on our sins which divide us, but on the faith of your church which unites us. Graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ understands well human nature 
and knows of charity and peace begin in our hearts that will ripple out to the wider world. Let us safely offer one another a sign of that love and peace. On you stay, qui tollis peccata mundi, miserere nobis, cordero de Dio. Proclaim Christ crucified and risen, the power and the wisdom of God who takes away the sins of the world. A happy day who dwell in your house and are invited to the banquet table of the Lamb. The Not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. And for our at home online community, this prayer of spiritual communion. Lord Jesus Christ, you promise to be with your church always until the end of time. We long to experience your presence more deeply and more intimately, even when we cannot gather in person as church to celebrate Eucharist. When I'm not able to be physically present at the Eucharist with the community, help me to strengthen and deepen my relationship with you as I seek to encounter and serve you not only in prayer, but all I meet especially the poor and needy of our world, adapted from Sister Judith Kabicki. And may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring us healing and strength now and forever and ever. as faithful members of Christ's body and show signs of living faith that we may be able to receive the gift of everlasting life through Christ our Lord. Amen.
We are taking cookie orders for the fundraiser to benefit the Matichero and Zulo families. Um, these orders are due March 10th, and the cookies will be made and decorated by our youth. But there can be virtual cookies also ordered. That is a straightforward do donation can be made. Please check the bull. <laughs> hmm. That sounds like a good idea. Okay. <laughs> Um, please set the bulletin for details as how to do that. Uh, the pil our pilgrimage to Israel is almost full. There are 16 travelers from St. Vincent's on the tour, and there are two spots left on the tour in case anyone was on the fence about that. After last week's do-it-yourself liturgy of the word for children, a number of adults have come forward to help with this ministry, so we will be able to offer it at the 11 o'clock mass. The format has been modified to provide physical distancing and safe activities. On March 11th, there will be an interfaith prayer walk for climate from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Please check the bulletin for details about that. The discussion of Sister Irene Knowles' book on the Psalms, Praying, Cursing, Praising, continues this Monday uh, on Zoom, and there's a link in the bulletin. Thank you to Dave Rowell for organizing Dr. Kim Harris's program on the experience of black Catholics in the American church. Over 50 people participated in that program. It was quite well received. Our next art workshop, Rites of Spring, Explosions of Color, will take place on Sunday, March 21st and Thursday, March 25th. Please check the bulletin for information about signing up or um, for signing up. Uh, please remember your census forms uh, to leave your worship aids on your chair. Uh, we need volunteers to wipe down the chairs after Mass. And we're exiting by Madison Avenue unless you need to use or desire to use the elevator. Sister Gail Waring and Margie Skinner are celebrating birthdays this weekend, so we congratulate them. And is there anyone else who's celebrating a birthday? Have a blessed week. No virtual cookies for this guy. <laughs> we want to continue to pray for the safety of the Holy Father, who, as we speak, is visiting in Iraq. And as the interfaith director for the diocese, I was very, very pleased at the meeting today with Pope Francis and the head of the Shiite sect within Islam. That particular Ayatollah who is 90 years old, almost sees no one publicly, I did meet with the Holy Father, and that Ayatollah is followed and listened to by millions of Muslims throughout the world. So I give thanks for that wonderful interfaith gesture this morning with our Pope in Iraq. And the Lord be with you. With your spirit. Let us pray for God's blessing. The signs of your love surround us, Father, and assure us of your loving concern. May we recognize your commandments as guideposts to happiness and union with Jesus, your Son, as the gateway to everlasting life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. God bless you all, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In the Mass, we have received not merely God's words, written on tablets of stone, but the Word of God incarnate, Jesus Christ in the Holy Spirit, living the law of love, and so being signs of God's presence in the world, go in peace. Thanks be to God. God.